Learn English with stories. The Golden Bird A certain king had a lovely yard with a tree that had golden apples on it. These apples were always counted, and when they started to get ripe, it was found that one of them disappeared every night. This made the king very angry, so he told the servant to stay all night under the tree and watch. The gardener told his oldest son to keep an eye out. But around midnight, he fell asleep, and when he woke up, another apple was gone. Then the second son was told to watch, but he also fell asleep at midnight, and when he woke up the next morning, another apple was gone. The third son then offered to keep watch, but at first, the gardener wouldn't let him because he was afraid something bad would happen to him. Finally, though, he gave in, and the young man sat down under the tree to keep watch. As the clock hit twelve, he heard a rustling sound in the air, and a pure gold bird flew towards him. As the bird's beak grabbed one of the apples, the gardener's son jumped up and shot an arrow at it. But the shot didn't hurt the bird, all it did was cause it to drop a golden feather from its tail and take off. In the morning, the golden feather was given to the king, and the whole court was called together. Everyone agreed that it was worth more than all of the kingdom's wealth, but the king said, I can't use just one feather. I need the whole bird. Then the gardener's oldest son set out, thinking it would be easy to find the golden bird. After not going very far, he came to a piece of wood and saw a fox sitting there next to it, so he took out his bow and got ready to shoot it. The fox then said, Don't shoot me. I'll give you good advice. I know what you're up to and that you're trying to find the golden bird. You'll get to a town in the evening, and when you do, you'll see two inns right next to each other. One of them is very nice and pretty to look at, but you shouldn't stay there. Instead, sleep in the other one, even though it might look very poor and mean. But the son thought, what could a beast like this possibly know about this? So he shot an arrow at the fox but missed, and the fox put its tail up over its back and ran into the woods. Then he went on his way and, in the evening, came to the village, where there were two inns. In one of them, people were singing, dancing, and eating, but the other looked very dirty and poor. I'd be a fool to go to that shabby house and leave this lovely place, he said. So he went to the nice house, ate and drank at his leisure, and forgot about the bird and his country. Time went by, and when the oldest son didn't come back and no news was heard about him, the second son left, and the same thing happened to him. He met the fox, who gave him good advice. But when he got to the two inns, his older brother was standing at the window where the party was, calling him in. He couldn't resist, so he went in and forgot both the golden bird and his home country. Time went on, and the younger son also wanted to go out into the world and look for the golden bird, but his father didn't let him for a long time because he loved his son and was afraid something bad would happen to him and keep him from coming back. But in the end, it was decided that he should leave because he wouldn't rest at home. When he got to the woods, he met the fox and got the same good advice. But he was grateful to the fox and didn't try to kill him like his brothers had. So the fox told him, sit on my tail, and you'll get there faster. So he sat down, and the fox started running. They ran so fast over stock and stone that their hair blew in the wind. When they got to the town, the son did what the fox told him to do. He went straight to the shabby inn and slept there all night without looking around. In the morning, the fox met him as he was starting his journey and told him, Go straight ahead until you come to a castle where a whole troop of soldiers are sleeping and snoring. 
don't pay any attention to them, but go into the castle and keep going until you come to a room where the golden bird is in a wooden cage. Nearby is a beautiful golden cage, but don't try to take the bird out of the shabby cage and put it in the golden cage. The fox shook his tail again, and the young man sat down. Then they went over rocks and sticks until their hair blew in the wind. Before the castle gate, everything was just as the fox had said. The sun went inside and found the room where the golden bird was hanging in a wooden cage. Below it stood the golden cage, and the three golden apples that had been lost were lying close by. Then he thought, it will be very funny to put such a beautiful bird in this old cage. So he opened the door, grabbed the bird, and put it in the golden cage. But the bird screamed so loudly that all of the troops woke up. They caught him and took him to the king. The next morning, the court met to decide his fate. When everything was said, they gave him a death sentence unless he brought the king the golden horse that could run as fast as the wind. If he did this, they would give him the golden bird as a reward. So he went back on his trip, sighing and feeling very sad. Suddenly, his friend the fox caught up with him and said, You see now what happened because you didn't listen to my advice. If you do what I say, I will still tell you how to find the golden horse. Straight on until you reach the castle, where the horse is in its stall and the groom is fast asleep and snoring. Quietly take the horse, but make sure to put the old leather saddle on him, not the golden one that is close by. Then the sun sat on the fox's tail, and they went over stock and stone until their hair whistled in the wind. Everything went as planned, and the groom fell asleep with his hand on the golden seat. But when the sun looked at the horse, he thought it would be a shame to put the old leather saddle on it. He said, I'll give him the good one, I know he deserves it. As he picked up the golden saddle, the servant woke up and screamed so loudly that all the guards ran in and took him prisoner. In the morning, he was brought back before the court to be judged, and he was given a death sentence. But it was agreed that he would live and get to keep the bird and the horse if he could bring the beautiful princess there. Then he went on his sad way, but the old fox came up to him and asked, Why didn't you listen to me? If you had, you would have taken both the bird and the horse with you. I'll still give you some advice, though. If you keep going straight, you will reach a castle in the evening. At twelve o'clock at night, the princess goes to the bathhouse. If you go up to her and give her a kiss, she'll let you take her away. Just make sure she doesn't go back to her parents. Then the fox spread his tail, and they ran over sticks and rocks until their hair whistled again. When they got to the castle, everything was just as the fox had said. At twelve o'clock, the young man saw the princess taking a bath and kissed her. She agreed to run away with him, but she begged him with many tears to let her say goodbye to her father first. At first, he said no but she cried and fell at his feet more and more until he finally agreed. But as soon as she got to her father's house, the guards woke up, and he was taken away again. Then he was brought before the king, who told him, You will never get my daughter unless, in eight days, you dig away the hill that blocks my view from my window. This hill was so big that no one could move it. After working for seven days and not getting very far, the fox came and told him, Lie down and go to sleep, I'll work for you. And when he woke up the next morning, the hill was gone. He was happy, so he went to the king and told him that since the hill was gone, the king had to give him the princess. The king had to keep his word, so the young man and the princess had to leave. The fox came up to the king and said, We want all three, the princess, the horse, and the bird. 
The young man said, Oh, that would be great, but how could you make it happen? The fox said, If you would just listen, it can be done. When you go to the king and he asks for the beautiful princess, you must say, Here she is. Then he'll be very happy, and they'll give you the golden horse. You'll get on it, put out your hand, and say goodbye, but shake hands with the princess last. Then quickly lift her onto the horse behind you, clap your spurs to his side, and race away as fast as you can. All went well, so the fox said, when you get to the castle where the bird is, I will stay at the door with the princess, and you will ride in and talk to the king. When he sees that it is the right horse, he will bring out the bird. But you must sit still and say that you want to look at it to see if it is the real golden bird. Then, when you have it in your hand, ride away. Again, this is what the fox said would happen, they took the bird, the princess got back on the horse, and they rode onto a big piece of wood. The fox then came and said, Kill me, please, and cut off my head and feet. But the young man refused, so the fox said, I'll at least give you some good advice, don't buy anyone off from the gallows and don't sit down by the river. Then he went away. The young man thought, well, that advice isn't hard to follow. He kept riding with the princess until he reached the village where he had left his brothers. When he got there, he heard a lot of noise and chaos. When he asked what was going on, people told him that two guys were going to be hanged. As he got closer, he saw that the two men were his brothers who had turned into thieves. He asked, can they not be saved in any way? But the people said no, unless he gave them all his money and bought their freedom. Then he didn't stop to think about it. Instead, he paid what was asked of him, and his brothers were freed. They followed him back to their home. When they got to the piece of wood where they met the fox for the first time, it was so cool and nice that the two brothers said, let's sit down by the river and eat and drink for a while. So he said, yes, forgot what the fox told him, and sat down by the river. While he didn't know it, they came up behind him and threw him down the bank. Then they took the princess, the horse, and the bird and went home to their master, the king, and said we worked hard to get all of this. Then everyone was very happy, but the horse wouldn't eat, the bird wouldn't sing, and the princess started to cry. The younger son fell into the river bed. Luckily, it was almost dry, but his bones were almost broken, and he couldn't find a way out because the bank was so steep. The old fox came back and scolded him for not taking his advice. If he had, nothing bad would have happened to him. But I can't leave you here, he said. Grab my tail and hold on. Then he pulled him out of the water and told him, Your brothers are wanting to kill you if they find you in the kingdom. So he put on clothes that made him look like a poor man and sneaked into the king's court. He had just walked through the doors when the horse began to eat, the bird began to sing, and the princess stopped crying. Then he went to the king and told him everything his brothers had done wrong. His brothers were caught and punished, and he got the princess back. When the king died, he became the king's son. After a long time, he went for a walk in the woods and ran into the old fox. The fox had tears in his eyes as he begged him to kill him and cut off his head and feet. And finally, he did. In an instant, the fox turned into a man, and it turned out that he was the long-lost brother of the princess. The End Thanks for watching.